Coming up on Hawk TV, we take a look at building damages from last week's snowstorm, a senior short film, and the start of the baseball season. This is Hawk TV for Friday, February 26th. Good morning, Hebron High School. I'm Ellery Lyles. Last week's snowstorm had an impact on the community and around the state. Ava Caballero Romo takes a look into how the damages around the school are being repaired. While students were enjoying a week off of school, construction workers were repairing damage to the school caused by the snowstorm. As repairs to the auditorium, main office, and academic wings continue this week, Assistant Principal Rachel Flanders is overseeing the renovations to ensure a full recovery to the building. We did have crews up here working 24-7 um, those couple of days that we were out. So they tried to dry up all of the carpeted areas, make sure that there wasn't standing water anywhere, but it can still present a problem to the staff and students in terms of not being able to practice, not be able to hold class in their normal location. While many parts of the building are already close to a full repair, the auditorium suffered more significant damage. The stage will take at least a month to be fully repaired, causing theater to be displaced. To solve this problem, Principal Amy Bowden has found a place for theater to practice in the meantime. Our theater group, um, they're getting, they're in the middle of UIL one act season. And so we're actually moving them to the MCL Grand in Louisville to practice until our stage can be fully repaired. Even with a new location to practice, the damaged stage still poses a problem to upcoming performances. Junior Jaron Robles, a theater student, says it's going to be difficult to work around the damages. If the stage gets fixed before the show, then obviously we're not going to have any problems, but you know, it's going to be kind of difficult working around like the damages and all that. With the 20 year refresh still occurring, Many damaged parts of the building, including parts of the roof and the auditorium stage, had plans for renovation anyway. Bouton says renovation was scheduled for this summer and next summer, so the building is on its way to a full recovery. Fortunately, we're in the 20-year refresh, and so parts of the roof that caused some of these leaks um, are in the process of being redone anyways and that being over the athletics area and the fine arts wing and so really long term we were planning on having those done this summer and next summer anyway so um, we'll be able to have a full recovery Many other schools have suffered more damage, causing students to be unable to return to in-person classes. Flanders says she feels lucky that everyone at Hebron has been able to return to school. There are people that aren't able to even come back into their school buildings. Um, we work today, we we're all here. Um, there were other schools that didn't have heat. There are other schools that didn't even get to come back to in-person. So right now I'm feeling very lucky. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Ava Caballero romo Thanks, Ava. The repairs aren't expected to be fully completed until after spring break. After spending last week at home, students had plenty of time to catch up on their favorite shows. We asked students what their favorite binge-worthy TV shows are. My favorite show is definitely Gossip Girl. I like to watch New Girl. My favorite show is probably Criminal Minds. Uh, my favorite show to binge watch is probably uh, Avatar Last Airbender. Um, I guess Friends, to be basic. Okay, um, my favorite TV show to binge watch is probably Survivor. My favorite uh, show to binge watch is Stranger Things. My favorite TV show to binge watch is probably Friends. Thanks to all students who participated. Senior Meredith Hendricks has always considered herself a performer and took her first theater class in sixth grade. 
This year, she directed her first short film and submitted it to the UIL Young Filmmakers Contest. Haley Pacheco got to take a look into her journey. Senior Meredith Hendricks was accustomed to acting on stage in theater and never thought she would direct a short film. She says it's something she'd always wanted to do, but never gave it a shot. I was always used to being on stage and like never being behind a camera and like doing all the directing stuff. So I always did wanted to try it. Um, and so I was like, sure, like I'll just write something and just see what happens. During the beginning of quarantine, like many others, Hendricks began feeling isolated and alone. She says this experience was inspiration for the film. It's about this girl who has that big feeling of like loneliness like a lot of us had during quarantine and stuff. And she uses that and she finds a group of friends that she has and she just takes, it takes away all of her loneliness, like she forgets about it and she just has a lot of fun. But in the end she realizes that none of her friends are real and it like goes back to that feeling of loneliness. But overall she just wasn't alone, like she always had people with her, whether they were real or not. After starting filming in October, editing and fine tuning, Hendrix submitted her film to the UIL Young Filmmakers Contest. Co-director of the film, senior Erica Gardner, and actress in the film, junior Rebecca Wagner, say the difference between her acting on stage and working behind the scenes. I think whenever any actor goes from being on stage to doing something behind the scenes, it's really, really cool to see because they're very, very different experiences, but getting to see someone blossom within their own choices of full direction is really awesome. I've acted with her since I was a sophomore and um, I've loved that but her directing like she was so passionate about it she loved it she had so many great ideas from the start it just shows how much of a leader she is and she just kind of stepped up from the beginning and took charge and really just did such a good job leading us. Hendrix says without this film, she would have never discovered her passion for filmmaking and her future major. As a kid, I mean like in elementary school, I would write like stupid little plays with like my friends, but I never thought that like I would actually do it. I always was like, oh, I want to be an actress. Like I always want to be on stage. But now that's definitely changed because I, I definitely like being behind the camera now. Despite projects in the foreseeable future, Wagner and Hendrix say that film is something that will definitely be present in the long term. She loves it. You can tell whenever she's directing us that this is something that she really loves. So I know she's talked about working on another short film and she's directing the spring show. She's student directing it. Um, and so I could so see her doing this in the future. Hopefully I want to be just in the film industry. I'd like to direct movies and just um, films in general. I hope to make it to the big leagues, you know. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Haley Pacheco. Thanks, Haley. Hendrick plans to make another short film soon and will be directing the theater company Spring Show. The Watch Your Words campaign, which debuted its first advisory lessons last month, is looking for additional student volunteers to help produce content for the final nine weeks. Students interested in joining should scan the QR code on the screen. With more virtual competitions on the way, WinterGuard has submitted its first performance and will be evaluated during this upcoming weekend. Malat Wolde takes a look into the team's preparation and how they're staying motivated. With in-person competitions canceled, WinterGuard is recording and submitting performances to North Texas Color Guard Circuit and WinterGuard International for judges to evaluate. Director Justin Sullivan says trying to keep a positive attitude amongst the team is an ongoing struggle. I would say that the hardest thing is that because it's so different, it's so virtual and disconnected. Um, you know, we're used to what we do as a, a live performance. So that's been a, a little bit of a challenge, um, just getting everybody to feel like it's still, you know, important as far as what we're doing um, and making sure that everyone's still bought in to, you know, we're, we're still competing, we're still doing all the stuff, we're just doing it on our own turf. Trying to find a new sense of determination, senior captain Karen Lopez says not being able to see what the team is up against will be a downside on their overall drive as a team this season. When we have the chance to see like other guards perform and see their cool tricks and what they have prepared. So like seeing them and then being like, oh my gosh, that's like really good. Like we have to outdo them. We just don't have that same like, um, how would I put this? Like a little extra kick in us to like outdo the other guards that came before us. So with just being in the gym now, it's just like, let's just do our best and then see how we do. Besides needing to build motivation, the team is confident in their skill level. Senior captains Annabelle Sanchez and Lopez say there are positive aspects that come out of these virtual competitions. I think being able to go into these different competitions with such a strong group of people and be able, being able to have so many different levels of skill makes me more confident because um, in a way I'm almost 
trying to live up to other people's skill level and be as good as other people. Now we have more time to just focus on ourselves. Instead of watching everyone else and comparing ourselves to them, we now have time to just focus on ourselves and just reality check us. Like, hey, we're doing this for us and we're gonna be the best. As Wintergard attempts to deliver the most successful recordings they can, Sullivan says clinging to their normal routine already in place is important when moving forward and improving. How we're teaching and how we're preparing is the exact same that it always been, ha has been. So uh, we don't we don't change that approach, um, and we're just trying to make it work and deal with the situation as we have to do it. But I'm confident that everything we're doing will make us just simply stronger for next year. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Malat Wooldo. Thanks, Malat. Winterguard will be having their first in-person community performance at the main gym tomorrow at 1:45. Since last year's baseball season got cut short due to COVID-19, they are looking to come back stronger this year. I got to take a look into the start of their season. Baseball has had about three weeks of practice time and a couple scrimmages up to now. Head coach Steve Stone says the season looks promising so far. Things are going well. Kids are working hard. I think they're chomping at the bit to get going since uh, last season was kind of cut short. So, um, you know, they're, they're, ready to, they're ready to go for sure. With last year's seniors only getting to play a handful of games before the season was canceled, Stone and senior Trent McCown says keeping them in mind is a big motivation. Uh, we only played 13 games last year, and uh, so part of what we're doing this year, we're, we're, our mantra this year is Band of Brothers uh, 2021, and so that includes our 20 grads and plus our 21 grads this year. We want to make up for the seniors that didn't get to play last year, for sure. With the goal of getting to state, Stone says the team is currently working to improve in several areas. Yeah, well, you know, you know, obviously pitching, hitting, and defense are the three main ingredients. Uh, but but base running is something we've got to really work hard on. Um, just the intangibles like bunting, uh, team defense, you know, situational defense, situational offense. Those are all things that you work on early in the season to prepare you so that by the time you get to district, you know, that you've got everything in order. McCown says being prepared for a difficult district schedule is important. Just adapting to our district because our district is one of the toughest ones in the state. And so we have to really make sure we're on top of our game for each game. Stone says that while the team's goals remain the same, brotherhood is more of a focus this year. I think more than ever, these kids feel that brotherhood because that's the one place where they somewhat feel normal. You got kids who are really excited about getting out there. Um, but... Uh, so it'll be different as far as that goes. Um, but, you know, our goals are still the same. I mean, anytime you turn the scoreboard on, the goal is to win the game and, and to advance in the playoffs and, 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 and uh, see how far you can get. And this year is no different as far as that goes. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Ellery Lyles. Baseball is hosting a tournament at home this weekend with games at 11 a.m. and 8 p.m. today. In other sports news, softball has two games scheduled in a tournament today at Waxahachie High School. Girls soccer plays at Clark Stadium against Plano at 7.30 tonight, and the boys play Plano at home at the same time. That's it for today's episode. I'm Ellery Lyles. Have any story suggestions? Our email is down below. And make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram.